Before we can really understand and break down each of the different MCAT sections, one of the things you really have to wrap your mind around is why is the MCAT important? And this is pretty easy for something like the bio biochem section where you're like, okay, I'm going to be a physician, so I probably need to understand how biology and biochemistry principles work. But what about some of the more kind of intricate details of bio biochem that are on the MCAT or even chem phys? Like how do those apply to medical school? And that's something I really didn't understand until I got to medical school where I realized that learning the principles that you need for the MCAT, so things like basic chemistry, basic physics, organic chemistry, and biology and biochemistry, um, learning those really can help you later on in medical school. And not only do they help you by teaching you the study skills you need, but they help you by the fact that you are going to see these principles over and over and over again. If you think that the end of physics is the MCAT, you would be incorrect. So mastering the material now is super important so that when you get to medical school, you understand the core principles and you can focus on learning how to apply them to the human body versus trying to both learn the principle and then how to apply it to the body. So let's talk a little bit about some examples that can kind of help you better understand what I'm talking about. So one for the bio biochem section are ribosomes. So when you're going through your MCAT study prep, you're probably gonna come across something that talks about ribosomes, the difference between eukaryotic, prokaryotic ribosomes. Okay, great, whatever. But why do we care? Well, if you think about it, anytime you have some sort of bacterial infection, you may go to the doctor and they're going to prescribe you an antibiotic. Well, what does an antibiotic do? A lot of antibiotics actually bind to the different units of a prokaryotic ribosome and either inhibit it or stop it so that you stop the infection. Well, that's a really important principle. And why can we take antibiotics and they don't like kill us or stop our ribosomes from working? Well, our ribosomes are different. And even a detail as minor as does an antibiotic bind to the 50S subunit or the 30S subunit of a ribosome, you're going to need to know that for medical school. So mastering it now and being familiar with, okay, I know there are two types of ribosomes, I know that there's eukaryotic, prokaryotic, I know that prokaryotic has 50S, 30S. That's going to help you so much when you get to medical school because now you don't have to relearn all that, you'll know it, and then all you have to do is fill in what antibiotic goes where and what are the effects and how does it apply to the body and how can you use it, all of those things. And there's a lot of other information that comes with medical school, so already having the foundation of knowing the basics, different ribosomes, different subunits, that sort of thing, just as something that's taken off your plate so you don't have to use it or don't have to relearn it later on. And you may be thinking now, okay, well that's bio biochem, so that makes sense, like why I need to understand that, but what about chem phys? Like how will I ever see that again? Well, a perfect example of that is, for physics especially, is the heart. So when you think about the heart, the heart is basically something that revolves around fluid physics and electrical physics. And so you really need to understand how fluids work and how electricity works to understand the heart. And when you get to your heart unit, the same thing kind of applies to what I talked about with the ribosome. If you understand the basics of fluids and how if you change a pipe size, that's going to affect the velocity, you can then understand, okay, well if I change the size of some sort of vessel in the body, how will that affect the velocity or the flow of the blood? All of those things come back, so understanding the general principle will help you later on. Same thing with the lungs or the kidneys. There's a lot of acid-base chemistry that you need to understand. So being comfortable with acids and bases, understanding them, how they interact, that's something that will show back up in different organ systems. And each organ system has its own example of something from the MCAT that will come back um, and you'll need to understand. But I think the big thing here is to recognize that you don't need to know all the details when you're taking the MCAT. You don't need to know which antibiotics bind where or which drugs affect the heart how. You don't need that. What you do want to do is take the opportunity for the MCAT and think of it not just as learning to take the test to get into medical school, but also solidifying your foundation in these pre-medical uh, school courses so that when you get to med school, you have that foundation, it's solid, and you can focus on how to apply this to patient care, to actually working with humans, and not just on, I need to learn this material and learn how to apply it and learn all these other things all at once. So hopefully that gives you a better picture of why you need to know these things and can help you a little bit when you're learning for the MCAT, when you think of it as not just for the MCAT, but you're really doing this for yourself when you get into medical school so that it will be an easier adjustment and you will do better. And overall, you'll just think yourself later if you master these core concepts now when you're taking the MCAT. 
Now that you understand why you need these principles, let's talk a little bit more about how you can learn. So we have actually created a course that's got a bunch of strategies for how to approach the science section. We cover everything from understanding difficult passages, math tips, how to approach graphs and tables, and what to do when you're getting confused on questions or answer choices. Our goal is to really give you resources that we wish we had had when we were studying for the MCAT and tips and tricks that would have been very useful to better understand the MCAT and ultimately score higher. So if you're interested in our strategy course or our tutoring, I'm going to link that below so you can check it out and learn the skills that we wish we had when we were studying for the MCAT so that you can not only master the MCAT, but ultimately set yourself up to master medical school too.